you wrote me an email uh, dealing with uh, fatigue and depression. Okay, so there's some obvious questions to begin with. Okay, uh, and that is when did the, when did these things start? <clears throat> Actually, the fatigue since I've been a child. Oh, okay. So all the other correspondences and meetings we've ever had over time, uh, fatigue has been part of your experience all that time. Correct. Okay. I believe that some of that could be, I'm not sure, from the restless legs that I've had my whole life um, because I didn't sleep at night so that in the morning or in school, I would feel exhausted. <clears throat> so right. then it became so that like it became the exhaustion became like was a really scary thing to me because I couldn't stay awake. Okay. That leaves us. I, I got that. Okay. That leaves us now with the depression. Is that also a lifelong thing or? Oh, yes. Mm -hmm. Oh, all right. I'm remembering somewhere early on as you joined our membership, you were getting some kind of results. I remember you were you were interfacing with unseen therapists in a way that I think surprised you a bit. Am I remembering that right? Oh, correct. I, I believe I did have two experiences with him there and they are still very clear in my mind. Um. um and, and, and even when I think of them, it's like, I think if I could live like that, my life would be perfect. The restless leg, I presume, would vanish. The fatigue would vanish. The depression would have no reason to be. I am, I'm saying that right? Correct. Correct. Okay. And I would be filled with this love for everything. All right. Now, did you say a few minutes ago that you have had such an experience, unseen therapist, spiritual experience, twice? Did Correct. I hear that? I heard that right. And, and yep. did they let? Did they last three um, minutes? Just, three three minutes? Three days? Uh, uh, I would say the first one lasted, and I, I don't know how long. I know that it wasn't really long because I was about to go to bed. My husband was sleeping, and I don't recall what I was doing prior to coming to bed, but I remember thinking how much he loved me, and it was like I, I, I couldn't believe it. And all of a sudden, I just flipped into this feeling. It was... Um, it was calming, yet it was energetic. It was just totally, totally loving. I mean, I could just feel this total love. Um, I remember I had had a bit of discord with my sister, and I remember trying to test it and thinking, thinking about her and her husband, and there was nothing but love for them, where I was not feeling that prior to that. Um, I can remember just kind of sitting in it because I didn't know it was going to go away, you know, and I went to lay down and, and, and stayed with it for a while and then fell asleep. It was gone in the morning. The second time I had been on a call, an EFT um, uh, meeting with, with the, my two friends, Elaine and uh, Judy Whit Whitcroft, and I have... I, um, I had just finished the meeting. I was in the basement on my husband's computer and knew my brother was coming. And I flipped again into it. And I could hear them upstairs. Uh, and I stayed in it. And then I got a little anxious. And then I came out of it. So what I'm hearing is your, your conscious awareness of this experience in both cases lasted a few minutes? Correct. Okay. 
and then it went away and never came back and yes i've tried i believe okay. i've tried to get it back okay. well so have i as you know i've had i've had my experience along these lines as well and uh, i've been trying to get it back of uh, a, a a difference between us perhaps um is that is that while i've been trying to get it back and never got it back to that degree okay um my life has been improving there's more peace in it uh i i have more ease with things that used to irritate me and so on and so forth are you experiencing that or is it it was just i saw this a little bit and then boom and i never got back uh, oh yes yes i know that it has imp improved um just um what used to be such a big deal to me is no longer such a big deal um I, I can see beauty and especially nature. Just going outside a sunset almost almost brings it back. Okay. Um, and I think if I had this fatigue thing fixed, I think I could live at a higher level. Yeah, okay. Well, okay, and let me tell you what I'm hearing so far, but but you need to correct me because I have to sit here and guess what's going on with Sue because I don't know the whole picture. So if I'm on target, say so. If I'm not on target, correct that, okay? Other, otherwise, we'll spend time going indoors that aren't useful, okay? So you said clear from childhood, the restless leg, and various fatigue and so on. What that says to me is that it's a likelihood that you did not feel um, completely loved or you felt rejected or ignored or something like that as a child. That is correct. <laughs> um... I'm going to plug in because I'm afraid I'm going to, my computer isn't keeping its charge real long. In just one second. Okay. Um, oh, yes. I was the youngest of eight children. And my mother was 40. My dad was 45. And apparently, <clears throat> I was colicky. And I cried, they say, for the first nine months of my life. <clears throat> um, this was back in the 50s so my mother the doctor told my mother she was exhausted she had me a new baby and then all these little kids running around I don't think she really even wanted me did not want you okay all right all right now, now let me stop you right there I'm I'm seeing the emotion about mother didn't want me just in the saying it. Okay. Now let me give you my presumption that again you need to correct me, okay? Because we need to get on solid footing here if we're going to make some progress. All right. Here's young you, like every young child. There's no exception to this. Um, looking for love. We all want, even adults, we're looking for love, acceptance. You know, it's a, we may think money is our number one thing, <laughs> okay? But <laughs> push comes to shove, love trumps it. All right, all right. So anyway, but you're not getting love, at least on your terms, the way you would like to get it. Your mother may be giving it to you on your terms, on her terms, I mean. Terms, yeah. Uh, yeah. She may think to herself, and I'm just guessing this, okay. She may think to herself, yeah, yeah, I'm I'm really going to give Sue love. I've got seven other kids here, you know, and I've got to, but I'm doing my best. And so hopefully she's going to pick that up and I'm going to be a good mother the best I can. <sighs> but I don't know why I had her to begin with. How am I doing? Yeah, I, I don't think that she even really considered giving me love. 
He never considered what? Giving me love. Oh, okay. All right. So it's not even as good as I tried to paint it. No, I, and I've done a lot of um, optimal EFT with it, and I understand where she was at, um, and I, I can see um, <clears throat> at one time the doctor told her to put brandy in my bottle, and so that would help me sleep. Oh, okay. I have a very vague, vague memory of at one time thinking, I remember the, the only thing, I can, the way I can think of this is that I wanted to be awake all the time because there was a lot going on and, you know, it was noisy and, you know, I wanted to be a part of it. But at that one point in my life, I remember thinking sleeping would be better. And I think that's where it all started. Okay. All right, let me, um, I'm going to talk a little bit just for a little while about some stuff. And some of this stuff you may have heard before. Okay. Um, probably worth hearing again for perspective and where we may go from here. I'm trying to build a foundation is what I'm trying to do. Okay. So I, I want to look at mother first. I don't know your mother. I have to guess about all kinds of stuff. Okay. But I'm seeing a mother who's got eight children. I mean, that makes me tired just saying those saying those words. Okay. <laughs> me too. <laughs> okay. And I've 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 raised three, okay. <laughs> and that was that's probably beyond my capacity. All right. Uh, for tolerance and one thing and another, because they're always wanting this and wanting that. And and I've got my own life to live and I'm resenting. Sometimes I don't, I, maybe I shouldn't, but I do resent this and resent that. And I don't have time to do this or do that. And da, 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 because somebody's crying at me and want, wanting this or that. And, and if I had eight, um, I might really resent the eight. For that matter, the seventh, sixth, and fifth. Okay. Mm -hmm. So I'm not excusing your mother's behavior. And I'm sure you've been through some of this, but I am aiming towards understanding it. Because behind that, and this is why I'm saying this, the young you may interpret that, would likely interpret that. As there's something wrong with me, I'm not lovable. I don't count. How am I doing? I think I got you a little bit emotionally, didn't I? All right. All right. Well, let me be just an engineer for the moment, okay, and, and sit back from all of this and look at it objectively. I, under, I understand there's more going on than some objective view. I got it, okay. But the objective view is here's the very young you needing love, not getting it, and without enough experience to make any kind of reasonable judgment about all that, you are concluding there's something wrong with you. Including the fact that somehow, somewhere, you are not lovable. Tell me how I'm doing. The, the, the lovable part doesn't raise an emotional response. The rest does. I'm not good enough. I don't count. That, that does, yes. Okay, the I'm not lovable, would I, would I interpret correctly that the lovability you have might come from, let's say, your husband, current family, and this kind of thing? Okay. Yeah. Mother may not, mother may not be able to exhibit love on my Sue's terms, but other parts of my life can. Did I say that right? And my father um, was, he was scary, but I knew that he, he loved me. Okay. 
But there's a void. Again, always correct me. I've got to, we got to get our foundation in place here, okay? But there's a void regarding your mother. Whether or not she actually loved you on her terms, you may not know that. You're suspecting not because you're an annoyance to her, your mere existence. I, I, I really believe she was not capable of loving me. Well, that's an important term, not capable of. Right, right. All right. Right. All right. So, so your take on it is not necessarily I'm not lovable because you have evidence in other places. Okay. But I don't count. I'm not good enough. There's something wrong with me. All of that resonates. Um, there's something wrong with me. I'm not feeling the charge on that right now either. Well, what does what does give you the charge? That she didn't love me. All right. I'm making a little note here. Hold on. All right. Uh, but I want to get behind that, Sue, because it's going to be important for us to get behind that. She didn't love me. All right. Behind that, the emotion behind it, that's what I want to get to. All right. She didn't love me. Now, the engineer in me keeps wanting to say she didn't love me on my terms. Okay. Um that's what keeps coming up for me. But you're you're okay. you're you're shaking your head no. There's something there. Um, I didn't have any terms. At what? What's that? I didn't have any terms. Okay. Well, let me let me suggest you did have terms. Uh, you just weren't aware of them. But let's talk about that a little bit. It may or may not be on point. If it isn't, tell me. we we got other places to go. Okay. Um, have you ever heard me talk about what I call rules? I, I don't recall that, All although right. I, I've heard a lot of what you talked All about. Right. All right. Look, but we'll, we'll talk about it a little bit here. And then you can tell me if it's resonating, whether or not. Okay. But we all have rules for all kinds of things. We don't, we never sit down and say, my rules for so and so are the, we don't write them down, but we develop them over time. And, and often among those rules are rules for how we feel loved. All right. Now, let me give you my rules, because I know enough about these now to <laughs> finally write them down okay because most of us have these rules and don't even know we have them okay including your mother including you including just about everybody you know all right except me but i'm going to give you my rules so now you'll know them <laughs> you could if you are going to exhibit to me communicate to me that you love me i have rules that i'm not aware i'm aware of them now but most people aren't aware of what these rules are for me to get that you love me. All right. And in my case, this may or may not be your case. doesn't matter. I'm trying to give you the idea of it. In my case, if you want to communicate that you love me, you do that through touch. Now I'm not, I'm not talking about, about sexual touch. Uh, you, you hold my hand, you, you rub my shoulders. Uh, you kiss me, uh, th this kind of thing. You do it through touch. That's my main avenue. All right. You can tell me you love me. I love you. Oh, aren't you wonderful? This kind of thing. Auditorily, okay? And it counts, but it's not the biggie. You can tell me all day long I love you, and my self-talk is, well, all right, so touch me. Okay. Uh, that's just how it goes. You can appeal to my visual sense. You can show me you love me by dressing up for me, by 
bringing me presents, gifts. You are showing me in a variety of ways that you love me. That doesn't count much either to me. It counts, but it's not my biggie by any means. You got to touch me. You don't touch me, you can do all the rest of the stuff all day long. And yeah, yeah, nice, 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 nice. But if you really want to do it, you got to touch me. That's my rule. That's my principal rule. Now, other people say, no, you got to show me. You have. I don't care about the touch. I had a girlfriend a long time ago. <laughs> she she wanted to be shown. I didn't know that. Okay, she was very much visual. You got to show her. Bring her gifts, flowers, and things like that. Okay. <laughs> And I wanted to be touched. And I, we would sit and watch television, and I would start rubbing her shoulders because that's my way of exhibiting love, okay? You touch. That's right. And she goes, don't do that. Don't do that. <laughs> I'm saying to myself, what do you mean don't do that? I'm, you know. Anyway, we didn't last very long because we were on different wavelengths. You hear? Okay. It didn't mean we had, didn't have affection for each other, but we really weren't complying with each other's rules because we didn't even know each other's rules. I didn't know my rules. She didn't know her rules, etc. Now, I say that because as you are a child looking for love, you have developed rules about that. And your mother has her own set of rules and she's putting them out on her wavelengths. And that's not your wavelength. You are missing like that. Okay. Now, she may not have loved you at all, as you were saying, on any wavelength. That could be. Is any of this resonating so far? <laughs> oh, oh, many things are. <laughs> um, and I, I briefly... Um, my husband never says that he loves me and and presents don't mean a whole lot to me but he holds my hand wherever we go uh -huh. you know he rubs my shoulder i'm funny that you should say this rubs my feet if we're sitting on the couch he always opens the door for me he writes me poetry on all of our special occasions um he i i haven't filled up the gas in my car for probably five years because he always does that for me so i never realized how much before that showed me love i mean i knew i know it i know it does but those kinds of things they're like really high on my list of, of love okay they, 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 because they I, are they are your rules well, they certainly make my life so much better. <laughs> okay. Um, All right. All right. Yeah, but the number one thing is trust. 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 Yeah, that's okay. That's the big right. thing. Um, um, trust and um, that, that's the that's the biggie. All right. Okay. I get. I get. I mean, I'm gonna make a little note. Hold on a second. I just got a little intuitive hit. Let me pass it by you, okay? I wasn't there as you were born and as you were being raised from an infant and on up and so on. I'm getting the intuitive hit that as you were born and like little kids do, you cry and you need to be fed and you have needs and blah, 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 change your diapers, all that stuff, okay? That your mother is getting very irritated because she's got seven other kids clamoring for her attention and so on. So she acts in some fashion abusively towards you. She yells at you. Maybe she gets mad and hits you or something like that. And all of that destroys trust and the major source of love you're supposed to have. How did I do? Yeah. Yes. Um, um to be fair um my father was drank a lot and um, gambled and she wrote me a letter once and said how um you don't know what it's like to live have six eight little children to feed and no money coming in and your husband having to gamble away all all the money and it gave me a new perspective of her. However, I'm sitting in that crib and I just want somebody to hold me. 
to pick me up and cuddle me. Uh huh. Okay. That's a rule. I, I'm trying to be so technical for the moment, but th that is a rule. You need to pick me up and hold me. I understand all this other stuff academically. Emotionally, I need to be picked up and held. Right, right. And my brothers and sisters were not, they said I was spoiled, spoiled, which what does that mean? I'm a rotten banana sitting in a, a you know, dish or something. You know, so um, one was one I slept with, and she was she was nice to me. She, um, she, um, my brother was awful, awful to me, and the other ones kind of were too. So, like, I didn't have anybody there that I could trust. I had had no one in my grade school or high school that I could trust. So. I don't know where you were going, but I, I got lost well, there. Okay, well, no, you're you're helping a lot because uh, some things are falling into place. But again, you always need to correct me. Okay, don't let me walk in a door that isn't really a good door. All okay. Right. All right. So, um, when you had these two spiritual experiences that lasted a few minutes, we talked about them early on. Okay. If you can recall, what was your level during those few minutes? What was your level of trust with the unseen therapist? There, there, there's, there's no top. There's no top. I mean, I, I could say ten, but ten would be diminishing. Okay. So you had our term now ultimate trust during those few moments absolutely okay and if that trust that experience could be expanded perpetually <laughs> you and i would have no need to talk we have no need to talk and i could do such good in my family in the whole world okay all right now, I'm going to ask you a question, which you may not have been asked before, so just do your best with it. Okay. If you could, would you give your mother that sense of love? Absolutely. Okay. Would I be correct in assuming, and just think about this before you answer, okay? Okay. Would I be correct in assuming that your mother's, one of your mother's greatest needs, if not her greatest need, would be love? I, I, I don't have to hesitate. I, I know that. Okay. You know that to be true. All right. So let me, let me ask you a follow-on question. If your mother indeed had this level of perpetual love, all right, um, would she have given that to you and to everyone around her, found a way to do that despite all the demands on her time, etc.? Absolutely. All right. Okay. Well, let me let me tell you what's coming up for me. And again, correct, correct, correct me. That we do an unseen therapist session. I want to do it in an experimental way, which I will discuss with you before we actually do it. But I just give you a highlight or two for the moment. Okay. An unseen therapist session where when you bring in unseen therapists, as best you can, and nobody's asking for perfection here, just, just the effort, okay? Bring her in in the trusting way that you had, at least for a few minutes, experienced. Bring her in in that trusting way. 
Now, I, what I'm not saying about that is you must all of a sudden have this dramatic sense of trust, etc. You're only trying to do that. You're only intentionally trying to bring that in. Uh, you are being open to that, whether or not you experience it currently. Are you with me? I can feel unseen spirit therapist here right now. Oh, okay. All right. Now, my own experience here is we may be able to do something with this, okay, and bring her in in that way. All right. But, but my children are here too. Uh, your children are here too. I, I don't, I'm not sure the impact. Okay, my mother and then my children, because of the guilt I feel as a result of what I learned as a mother to them. Meaning your be meaning your behavior to your children wasn't what yeah. you would like it to be. Yeah. And you have some guilt L about little, that. Little children, not older children. Older children were, were good, little children. Are you are you speaking of your little children? My okay. little children. Okay. So your be behavior around your little children in retrospect, isn't what you would have liked it to be. Probably the same as my mother was to me. Oh, okay. All right. All right. So you, in some fashion, repeated your mother's inappropriate mother behavior with your own children. So your own children have their own issues growing up with that. You feel guilty about that and so on. Okay. I'm sure. <laughs> um, I, I wasn't... I was better than she was. All right. But not good enough, apparently. Okay. All right. All right. Well, I don't know if this helps or not, but let me just make a comment about that, okay? I don't know what you did with your children. I don't know all the details of your mother and you and, and all of that, okay? But one thing I am absolutely positive about is that children have a PhD in how to manipulate parents by age three. <laughs> they can give you guilt and they learn how to do it real easy. You know, they will, they will cry because you did something or something is going on in their world and you can't stop them from crying, you know, because you don't even know what it is. Okay. <laughs> and so you feel guilty about it. They'll, They'll look at you, you know, but because you will speak sharply to them and they'll look like, you know, you just beat them mer unmercifully, okay? Um, they will say, one of their favorite things is, well, you said, okay, <laughs> to throw right back at you some promise you made to them or something like that. I mean, they're, they are really, really good at that, okay? And, and so I'm echoing stuff you've experienced. They were just a little bit with children. Yeah. 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 But they will get you they will get you big time. They will get you big time. Well that, they did. <laughs> that, well, listen. Join the parade. I have yet to meet a parent who did not experience at least some of that. Okay. <laughs> Because that's what kids are actually uh, um, um, very guilty of parent abuse. <laughs> I like that. I really, I like that. Well, it's true. It's true. Now they they don't necessarily mean it nastily because they're trying to find their own way through the through the world. And they want to get their own way. That means it, who doesn't? Okay, that's just how it. That's just how it is. You know. So they're going to do whatever they can to get their way, and they're going to keep experimenting with it until they do and they're going to find out how to manipulate you really big oh all i gotta do is look at give this face to my mother and oh it doesn't matter i can i can have anything i want okay but if i give her that face i'm gonna get hit or i'm gonna i'm gonna get yelled at or something's gonna happen bad they learn that real real soon so my question is 
why did I not learn that from my mother? <clears throat> you know, I mean, I, I hear what you're saying about my children, but why didn't I learn that to do that with my mother? Well, you may have and didn't know, but you probably, you may, I, I have to guess, okay? You may have irritated her so much, she just, her volcano just kept erupting around you. And that's all, that's all she knew how to do. I, that, that's a guess, okay? Well, that could be. <laughs> that could be. Okay. okay. Well, one of the, one of the with all that, that's all like a reframe discussion, all of that, Okay. And in all of that, the reframe we're looking for um, is that what you're experiencing now in the sense of your mother didn't love you is the interpretation of a very young child. And it is true, your mother may not have loved you. She may have resented you big time and all of that, all right? But that is not, this is the reframe, okay? I'm not sure we're there quite yet, but the general reframe is, you're just a kid doing what you can, trying to do, okay? It's not working for you, at least on your terms. Um, you don't feel love, your mother didn't love you. And that's haunting you. It's a void that needs to be filled. Am I right so far? All right. And it's not really your fault. Now, did that land or not? It landed without a <clears throat> uh, emotional response. Oh, what does that mean? It landed without oh. emotional <clears throat> That means I've um, released it <laughs> in my terms, you know. Right. Uh, and if I have an emotional response yeah. to it, that means that it's still stuck there. Okay. All right. All right. All right. All right. Well, that's a beginning attempt at a reframe. Okay. So we're going to do a little bit more. Okay. Now, one of the things, this is my view. If you don't agree with it, please tell me. Please tell me. Okay. And you may have heard me say this before. Um, one of the things that that we all, all of us do is we look outside of ourselves for love. We want to find somebody else out there who loves us. We want to find a spouse. We want to find an audience who applauds us. We want to find somebody who will compliment us. We want to find somebody who will enjoy sex with us. We want to find somebody who will touch us, show us they love us, and on it goes. Okay, there's a long, long list of things. But we are looking outside of ourselves for love. How are we doing so far? All right. Now, there's a, there's a problem or two with that. Okay. One of those is, so is everybody else. <laughs> I'm sorry for laughing, but... but no, that, no, I hear you. <laughs> uh, uh, your husband, for example, as much as he may love you and show it and, and so on, he's looking for love from you. Okay? It may seem almost a very, a very selfish thing, but that's that's sort of how it is. Okay. <laughs> You're looking for love from him. He's looking for love from you. You are outside of each other in this sense. He's looking for love from you. You're looking for love outside of yourself from your mother. Okay. Is your mother still living? No, no. Okay. Neither. Neither my parents. All right. Your children are looking outside of themselves for love from you. You are looking for love from them. Okay. Um. We are all looking outside of ourselves for love from other people. But they are doing the same thing, okay? And what they're not doing, this is the important thing, <laughs> is developing the love inside. When you had your spiritual experiences, and correct me if I'm wrong, you were developing love from the inside. 
correct correct me on point what it was just there i didn't have to even develop it it was just there yeah okay and and again correct me if i'm wrong in those few minutes you may never have thought of this. Well, just let me plant this seed and you tell me where it goes, okay? In those few minutes where you are being love, I'll put it that way, okay? Um, you were also simultaneously radiating love that others in those moments, if they were there, could see, could recognize, and could say, oh, that's really love. Now, that's a guess of mine. Works? Doesn't work? Tell me. Hard to say because I was pretty much alone at that time. I don't recall speaking of this to my husband, who was asleep. And the other experience, I was by myself. However... The interaction between my brother and his wife when I went back upstairs was uncommonly pleasant, you know, versus my feeling whatever I would feel at all that right. time. So that almost says yes. All right. Except well, I have nothing to, yeah, that's possible evidence that you were radiating right. something that they weren't picking up earlier. Okay, and when you ha when you have that kind of love you do radiate it you can't help but radiate it if you're running around with oh oh what's what's wrong with me you're going to radiate that too mm -hmm. that took a while huh? <sighs> that makes so much sense all right. Well, we're recording this, so you can go back over this and and um, okay. it might it might really be worthwhile going over it several times because a lot of these reframes don't necessarily land as we might like them the very first go through. Sometimes they got to settle a little bit, and that one that one just might have settled pretty well and would settle more as you get more exposure to it. Okay, we'll see. We'll see. <laughs> I'm curious. I didn't ask you anything about this to begin with, but on a scale of zero to 10, your restless leg, has it gone better or worse or the same as when we started? I, I, did, I did not have it when we started because I only get it at night after I lay down to sleep. Okay. However, the energy has changed considerably as has the depression it's oh gone. Um, well, give, give me a give me a sense of a percent improvement 10 percent, 40 percent more or less what 75 oh really okay all right so that to me says some of these reframes are starting to land now okay? my fear is that it's going to go away as soon as i click off this call well and, and that may happen that's why we're recording it Okay. okay, but we're not done. We are we are getting prepared for an unseen therapist session. Okay. Okay. She's listening now. Okay, she has been all the time, and so on. Um, and we're going to formally invite her in a minute in an experimental way, like I told you. Okay. Uh, and let me now let me now kind of tell you how this experiment works, so you'll get a sense of where we're going as we do this. Okay. In recent times, uh, I've been working with a lady who, as a child up until age six, was subject to satanical ritual abuse. Do you know what that is? All right. I'm going to be a little graphic with you because I want, I want to give you a sense of this. All right. I don't know if I... You don't want to hear it? Okay, then I won't. I won't. All right. Okay. I've but, always thought, God, go ahead. I couldn't believe the avenues of your mind. I'm, I'm, so, I'm sorry. Say it again. Guard carefully. 
<laughs> the avenues of your mind. Okay. All right. So I won't tell you. I won't tell you the details. I, I can. I get it. All right. But I want to tell you what transpires during the session, because that's what's going to, that's what we're going to be doing here. All right. So, okay. Let, let me stop. Okay. So if I don't hear this, is that going to make the lesson, the session less um, um, complete? Less, less impact? No, no, no. Okay. I was just going to tell you if you were able to hear it, so you'd get a sense of how serious no, this really was. But I have a sense. Okay. All right. All right. So let me tell you how how the the structure of the sessions. That's what I want to get to you is this, not the details and all that, but the structure of the sessions because that's what you and I are going to do. Okay. So there were fifteen sessions. All together. And by the way, by the way, if you, I haven't announced these yet on uh, our newsletter or anything, but they are up on our website and they would be on your membership if you go to the recorded sessions uh, and scroll down past Sandy and other ones you've likely have been to, you'll find one for. Carol. Now, we didn't call it satanic ritual abuse. She didn't want to call it that. Okay. But severe trauma. Okay. But it's Carol. Okay. With, quotes, with quotes around it. All right. Okay. So approximately the first half of our 15 sessions, I am tiptoeing around all these things because I want to, I want to, knowing how how severe ab reactions can be with this kind of trauma. I wanted to just gradually ease into them, take the edge off so she's more and more comfortable about getting down to, you know, deeper things. Okay. So you'll see me doing a lot of that with her and she's talking about it and so on and talking about it in highlight terms kind of thing and so on. And we are taking the edge off and she is feeling more comfortable and some of her physical things are starting to fade and stuff like that. So you, so this is a good thing, but it's not as deep as we may want to go. All right. The latter half of this, as we, as she is more and more comfortable getting down into some more details, all right. Um, I shift, and that's where you and I are going to do something here experimentally. And that is instead of me narrating what's going on, like here's a specific event, even though I may not know all the details yet. Okay. Uh, here's a specific event. But let's take your emotional response to it. And let's call that an unwanted vibration in your body someplace or let's call it a volcano or let's call it a throbbing red ball you know i create some kind of a metaphor that we hand to unseen therapists unseen therapist does something with it and she gets some relief that that's how it goes yes. for, for newcomers that's almost essential because they just don't know how to navigate to all this and they need that kind of hand holding all right so and i did that kind of hand holding in the earlier sessions in the later sessions, I would do something different. I would say, okay, here's our specific event. Let's, I don't create any, I don't narrate anything now, but just from this point on. Let's just hand your emotional response to this, whatever it may be, to unseen therapists. And let's let unseen therapist just do whatever she's going to do with it. Doesn't need me narrating things and guiding things and all of that. You just let her do whatever she's going to do. But in the process, in the process, narrate what's going on. And, and this may seem strange to you. How am I going to do that? Because I, da, da, da. But I'm going to put it in your lap. All right. And just do your best with it. Okay. Um, and she at first wasn't understanding or getting much. And then she would say, well, ooh, I can feel the pain, you know, like, like 
here. Okay. I can, ooh, I, oh, something's happening. I feel this light. I feel this coolness. Unseen therapist is doing something. She's narrating this. Okay. Unseen therapist is doing something. It feels better now. And I might say something like, well, because I might, I might add in a thought or two to help guide a little bit what's going on, okay? Uh, does it seem like that physical thing is related to something? Yeah? Yeah? yeah. Well, okay, what else is going on? Well, I can, I can see the look on, you know, some of the faces in the specific event. Are they good or bad? They're confusing. Well, what's happening with unseen therapists? Whose faces are the older oh, other children's? Or I can see a scowl, or I can hear a voice of a perpetrator, or this kind of thing. Okay. And what is unseen therapist doing with that? Not sure. Waits a little bit. Oh, well, okay. I think she's doing ta 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 ta. Okay. That would be how it's going. That is allowing you or Carol in this case, to work with the unseen therapist in a manner that you are ready for, Carol was ready for, all right? And in a manner that unseen therapists could, could handle as gently as need be at this level of going into it. Are you with me? So it's a way... It's a way of conditioning you towards a gentler, perhaps, I think, deeper, more useful way of using unseen therapist to get to things even you don't even want to touch. Okay. So was that clear to you? Uh, uh, does it seem doable, not doable? Uh, tell me. I'd like to try it. I'd like to give it a try. I'm not sure what okay. I can remember, but well, it'll be your first try at this, okay? And that's that's one reason that's one reason we're recording it because you can go back and play it again and okay. try it again. Eh, maybe do better a second try. That's like that's what human beings do. We try things again and again and again. And after a while, we get pretty good at it. Okay, it's that kind of thing. All right. Okay, so I want to go back in time. I want to find something to zero in on for our session. A specific event, that would be a good one, okay. But you made the comment, which I wrote down and it sort of stands out to me, but change it if you wish. That is, my mother didn't love me. That was a phrase I put down. Whether she should have or not, whether we can excuse the behavior or not, and whether she actually loved you or not, the fact is you felt like my mother didn't love me. I'm I'm right. <clears throat> That's that is right. What's coming to me is the the time when I chose to sleep rather than stay awake. Oh. There was a time that, and I vaguely remember it, thinking, oh, it's so much better to sleep. And I think that that has something to do with the fatigue. All right. So I want to I want to play engineer a little bit. Okay. And be technical a little bit. We have okay. a sent sentence in our book to form a specific event. Let's start with that. And that starts with the moment when... I'm going to write this down. The moment when, now, the moment when we want to, we want to fill in out what happened. Okay. The, the moment. Was, yeah. Safer. Oh, I, say it again. I, I, safer. The sleeping was safer. It was safer. safer. Say it again. To what? Safer to, to sleep. To was, not be there. Oh, safer to sleep. 
So you would be blocking out your mother's unloving her, presence? Her, I don't know if it was just mom or what, but just say it was just sleep. Okay. It would, another way to say that would be safer to escape. Yes, yes, yes. yes. Is that a better word or... Yes, yes, to escape. Yes. When, okay, the yes. moment when it was, I'm writing this down, safer to escape, whoops, escape, slash sleep. And about how old were you? I was in a crib. Um, I was in a crib, but that age two or something. Two, I would say two or three. Okay. All right. All right. Now I, I want to get a little more specific here, if we can, because what we're looking for is a crescendo moment if i know you're two or three years old so how do you remember all of this so we don't need to have things absolutely perfect not at all but we do need to have something as representative of your emotion as we can all right so i'm imagining you, and you fill in this blank for me if you can you concluded somehow it is safer to escape or, or go to sleep than yes. to be than to be in the presence of your mother. Did I say it right? To, 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 to be in this world. To be in this world. Okay. All right. Now, is that a is that an adequate sentence to to contain what was uh, happening uh, now? Uh, well, the only world that I knew would have been my family. So, to be in this family, perhaps. All right. If that's what you're asking. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. All right. Let's do something a little, a little more with this. I want to do a little upfront testing as best we can. We want to get a before here so we can measure an after later. Okay. So the idea is you close your eyes. If you would, they're already closed. I see that. Okay. Um, and imagine yourself being at age two or three, and it's okay if you don't remember every detail who does at age two or three, okay? But imagine yourself saying to yourself, ooh, it's going to be safer to escape from all this. And tell me on a scale of zero to 10, how intense does that feel? The, 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 the response has just become extreme exhaustion. Okay, would you call that a 10, an 8? A... 10. It's a 10 exhaustion. All right. Let me write that down. Are you having any physical signs in addition to a exhaustion? Is there a tightness someplace or a... Tightness in my throat. I've been crying a lot. Are you feeling that tightness in your throat now? Yeah, that's at about a... That's what? Five, maybe. Yeah. I'm making a note. Hold on. All right. Now, the last part of this sentence is... And my current... Emotion. That's the emotion you're having now as you remember it. Is, is it exhaustion? That's not really, a, maybe that's an no, emotion. It's, it's um sadness. I guess probably there must be anger down there, but I don't feel it. I, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. It, it didn't. Um, I didn't it, it, um, sadness. I think there's anger there, but I'm afraid to bring, I'm afraid of the anger. Well, okay, that sounds to me like the anger is the biggie because you're afraid to even bring it up. 
Yes. All right, but 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 I'll, don't let me assume. Go ahead. It overwhelms me. All right, you're even having trouble breathing with this. Should I stop and slow down here, or no? Okay. All right. With that in mind, we're going to bring in unseen therapists. Okay. We're going to have a session. We're going to bring in her help with this. Okay. Along the lines that I described to you earlier. So we're not in a hurry. There's no hero here whatsoever. I don't have any big thing that I've got to get to right away. Or I've got all the time you need and so on. Are you with me? Okay. I also love you dearly. Do you hear that or not? I hear it. I don't believe it. All right. Okay. So I will sneak off into the wilderness thinking uh, you know, I'm a liar. <laughs> <laughs> Let me say it differently, okay? You may not be ready to hear the words, I love you. All right. Perhaps you can hear the words, I admire you because I know what you're going through and you're willing you're willing to get in there and and dig. Do you believe that one? I do. All right. Okay. So we don't really need we're going to invite unseen therapists formally anyway. We don't really need to do it. She's here, okay? But your eyes are closed. You know, take a nice deep breath if you would. A relaxing breath if you can. We're going to have a little peace. We're going to have a little fun. You know. And uh, just recall a simple loving moment in your own life. And just nod your head whenever you're there. All right, good. And just as a reminder, a little digression here, your eyes still closed. Recalling this loving moment is simply a way of aligning with unseen therapist, pure love. The kind of love that you experienced during those few minutes that we talked about earlier on today. You're just trying to align. You're not there. Okay? Neither am I. But you're doing your best to align yourself with her pure love because you're going to borrow from it. She's going to loan it to you. She's going to share it with you. And she just needs to know that you're doing your best to align. Okay. That's all you're doing here. Okay. So it doesn't matter whether it, you've got some Hollywood moment or, you know, you're just petting your dog and feeling good. Okay. Whatever. Okay. So anyway, we're going to go back in time. Here you are in your crib. You're two or three years old. You've had some experiences apparently up until this point that um, tells you about the outside world, your family, whatever you know about it, isn't all that pleasant. You'd like to think it was just filled with love and compassion and lots of nice touches and beautiful things and all of that, but it isn't. It isn't. It isn't going according to your rules, but you don't even know what they are at the moment. And you get this sense, this sense of unrest that comes largely from the presence of your mother. Who underst We're not excusing her behavior. We are understanding that she's under a great deal of Stress and demands and one thing and another. You've even experienced those yourself as a mother. Mm -hmm. So we're under, not excusing it. We're understanding it. And you are having let's escape type emotions about this. Let's go to sleep. This is bad. I can't take this. I need to get out of here. Did I say it right? All right, good. So just hand those emotions 
over to unseen therapists. You can locate her someplace outside of you if you wish. You can locate her somewhere inside of you if you wish. You're just going to hand it to her. It's too big for you. You're two or three years old. It's way too big for you. It's too big for most adults, too, by the way. Okay. Perhaps. You're going to hand that to her. Now, take your time. And even if you have to make it up or imagine it, narrate what's going on. You can even narrate what you would like to see going on. Just give some narration to what unseen therapist and her pure love, that love that you've seen for a few minutes in the past, is doing with this. Whenever you're ready, just, just say. Well, I can <clears throat> see myself standing in the curb, jumping up and down. And there's a door that closes. It's a slide door. And there's a little bit of light and I can hear everyone else there. And I'm screaming and I'm yelling and nobody's coming to me. So you're screaming and yelling for help of some kind? Just cr crying. From loneliness, from lack of love, from you need your diapers changed to... I, I don't know what it is, but they said I had colic, so I'm okay. think, All right. thinking it might be my stomach hurts, but I don't feel that that's it. I I think that became an excuse. Okay. All right. All right. To, to, to pay attention to me. But in the corner, I can see this light. That's <sighs> rubbing my back. The light is rubbing your back? Uh-huh, okay. That's unseen therapist, I gather? Uh-huh, okay. She's soothing. She's soothing me. It's okay. You are special. You are special? Uh -huh, all right, all right. Do you buy it? Do you buy it? Uh, oh, I, 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 the tension and the whatever's still in my body. I... Okay. I'm telling you, I don't know how to release it. I, I'm sorry, you don't know how what? To release it. To release it. Okay. Well, it, it's not your job to release it. It's hers. Can you give it to her? Can you trust her? Oh, I can trust her. She's the first thing in my life that's cared for me. Is she incapable of releasing it? I just want her to hold me. I want to get out of that crib. All right. Well, why don't you spend a few moments allowing her to hold you and just stay in the crib? Uh, that's a suggestion, uh, not a requirement. All right. Does that fit? All right. Well, go ahead. Okay. Whoa. She just made the whole room her so that she could. She said, um, 
we don't need anyone else. Does that seem right, or are you resisting it? Uh, I'm, I'm, I'm afraid she'll leave, too. Uh, she said that that she will. She, she she's that I am her and she is me. In that, um, I just have to te test it. I don't. I don't like. I don't like that because I don't. I don't like that. You don't like the idea to test it because <laughs> you're you're afraid you'll test it and she'll go. Okay. Okay. Yes, I'm afraid it won't work. Well, how are you going to know? <laughs> By testing it. <laughs> <laughs> Bingo! <laughs> there we go. Well, so give it a test. And by the way, if she does leave, it isn't her leaving. It's me. <laughs> it's it's yeah. you not. It's you resisting. But that's okay. We can come back to it. We can come back to it. All right. So go ahead, test it. Uh, there's no way to test it without telling you what I'm testing, and I don't want to do that. Because it's private? Okay. Um, well, I usually find um, that there's a way, even though it's private and you don't want to tell anybody about it, that there's a way to do it. Now, how, what that would be here, but to be, I'm, I'm going to give you a suggestion. You tell me if it fits or not. And I, I, I'm not imposing on this. It's, it's a suggestion about how to do it without doing it. Okay. Give whatever it is you don't want to disclose a name. Fido, call it Elvis, call it, I don't know, whatever. You can give it a name. Give it some initial, okay, uh, initials. Okay, MSN. MS, like Mary Sam? Mary Sam Nancy. Mary Sam Nancy. Nancy. MSN. MSN, okay. So the thing you don't want to disclose is MSN. Am I, am I correct? Correct. All right. Now, if you're okay with it, one more little question about that. What is your emotional response, if that's the right question? Is it guilt? Is it anger? Is it – what is your emotional response? Guilt. To M it's guilt. Okay. Yeah. All right. Before we go any farther, let me just mention something about this, if I can. It's my experience – that the one thing almost every client, therapeutic client, does not want to address is guilt. They will tend to want to address trauma that somebody else did something to them, trauma from the outside. Somebody did something to me, and so I'm angry about that, so we'll deal with that. Guilt is a little too close to home often. yet. There is no one on the planet who is immune from guilt. The planet is designed to give us guilt, okay? 
I don't know a single person. Maybe you do. Maybe you do. But I don't know a single person who wouldn't love to turn back the clock and redo a whole bunch of stuff that they're not that proud about or they wish they could redo or something like that. Okay. I drank a lot when my kids were little. It's what? I dr drank a lot when my kids were little. Oh, okay. Drank a lot. All right. Okay. And so your behavior then wasn't what you would be proud of. I mean, do I have it right? Okay. All right. All right. Is that um, the kind of thing that unseen therapists would say, oh, I didn't know that. Shame on you. We're not going to give you any release on that. You should be, you should feel guilty forever and bad and everything else. So I'm leaving. I don't know. <laughs> well, in the experience you had the few minutes that we talked about early on, would that be her response? No. No, would, during those two minutes, it would not be her response. What would that response be? Love. <laughs> like, that's yesterday. No, no, not even that. Not even that. It would have been just love. <laughs> okay. Why or would just... why wouldn't it be that now? Because as a human, I have not been able to find a way to release that. Okay. I didn't hear all those words, but you're saying... As, as a human, I have not found a way to release that. Okay, but that's not your job. <laughs> your job is to allow it. And that may be what you're... You're not allowing it yet. Like you shouldn't allow it. You should hold on to that and be guilty forever. You know, I know, I know, but that that doesn't make any sense. But that's exactly how I feel. Well, okay, but that's that's the point. That's how it feels. That's the emotional response. How many people in this world drank too much? Well, I know I did as a baby because I was fed brandy in my bottle. Well, and that's all your fault, of course. <laughs> Maybe because I cried too much. Well, and that's all your fault too. <laughs> <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> okay. Why did I cry so much, though? I don't know. You said you were colicky. You, you know, you're not feeling love. You, you know, you, what are you, what are you going to do when you, you've got to communicate somehow to the outside world? Hey, I've got a void going on here. You know, change my diapers. Do something. You know. Uh, you know. <laughs> And all of a sudden, I'm finding this funny, and it's not supposed to be not supposed to be funny. Well, but I'm just finding it light, lighter anyway, lighter. Well, let, let's not call that release, okay? We won't call <laughs> we, we won't call that release. It can't be funny. Let's let, let let's go back and see how serious we can be about this. I I, I, I took I took good care of them as much as I could, and I I help. I just didn't want them to ever cry, you know. <laughs> Because you know what it felt like to be to cry like that and nobody was there to help you. Yes. And so your children would, I think I'm saying it right, but always correct me. So your children cry, you're replaying your unresolved crying as a child yourself. Nobody here is to help me. You are saying to yourself, always correct me, okay, Um my children are going through what I went through, and that is such a bad feeling. I'm going to go drink a lot to escape. Well, um, possibly. <clears throat> Either that, I would pick them up and I would hold them and I would feed them about, you know, that kind of a thing. Um, mm -hmm. Maybe feed them too much, I don't know, so they wouldn't cry. Um, give them pacifiers so they didn't cry. 
I have to tell you a story. Okay. I don't know why I'm going to tell you this story. I'm just, <laughs> I'm just guided to tell you this. My first daughter's name was Tina. Okay. And uh, I shared the diaper changing ritual with my wife. Okay. <laughs> And my wife one day was gone. She was out shopping or something like that. And I was home with my daughter. She was like one years old or eight months old or something. Time for a diaper change. Now, in those days, we didn't have... Uh, disposable. <laughs> we didn't have the disposable and we didn't have the Velcro. You had to do it with a pin, you know, and, and all that. So I remember, yes. Okay, so here I'm changing this diaper. Good daddy, all right. So I'm wiping her clean and all of that and got a clean cloth diaper and I'm putting the pin in and she starts crying and crying and I mean screaming. You pinned her. What's that? Did you pin her? Yeah. You did. I did. <laughs> I didn't realize it, but I had no idea why she was screaming so hard what did i what happened what's going on inside you are you know are you having appendicitis i mean i mean i it was just one one moment she was just you know a happy little kid you know my diapers are being changed good thank you and the next <laughs> moment she is just screaming and it take me took me a few moments till i finally realized that pin went through her skin okay oh I can still feel a little twinge of guilt, even though it's not really my fault. I just, it was an error on my, I made a mistake. I didn't mean to stick that pin through her, but I did. I did. Talk about kids giving you guilt. Okay. <laughs> so I finally took the pin out and she, <laughs> she quieted, she quieted down and I did the pin as it should have been done. And, left her skin out of it <laughs> oh. <laughs> you, you, you know you find that guilty and i kind of I, I don't know why i find it kind of funny because it's not me that did it i guess well yeah but there you are an adult dealing with some child you have no idea what's going on with them they're crying for whatever the reason right, it could be right. it could be it could be things you have no clue about i had no clue about sticking her with the pin okay that was my point until later i finally figured it out okay because it was pretty obvious okay <laughs> <laughs> after a while um <laughs> but in the meantime i caused great pain okay great pain that hurts that hurts yeah. And there you are, a young child, and you have no idea where that pain is coming from. And all you can do is cry and say, please help, 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 help. Ah! Okay. And I'm getting irritated, frustrated. <laughs> no, Nobody's winning here, okay? <laughs> anyway. God bless your soul. Say it again. God bless your soul. <laughs> yeah. And her. Well. Yeah, but see, see, uh, is somebody going to turn around and give me a bunch of guilt because I, and am I going to take the guilt because of that error? Well, I still don't like to having done it, okay? <laughs> <laughs> but am I losing sleep over it? No. Uh, uh, do I see it as, oh, it's even a laughable event. I could talk to my daughter about it, which I have, and she laughs at it, okay? Yeah. Um, <laughs> Yeah. So I, this is all sort of like a reframe, if you will. But you see, you're ending up in a way laughing at some of the, I'll use my term, absurdity of some of your reactions to all of this. Did, did I say it right? Yes. That's a form of release, but don't let me impose that on you. Is it or isn't it? I'm not sure yet. <laughs> I'm okay. not sure yet. Some of us. All right. All right. Well, let's go back. Let's go back to MSN. Okay. okay. Um, some guilt-related stuff um, and so on. Okay. So I don't know what MSN is. Don't need to know. You know what it is. That's the, that's the point. Okay. An unseen therapist knows what it is. 
All right. So would I be correct in assuming that if, if you could turn back the clock, MSN would not occur again? You wouldn't? I, I, I don't know because of where I was at the time. Okay. Well, all right. All right. Yeah. Not necessary. I, I don't want to. Yeah. But anyway, here's MSN going on, creating guilt. That is correct. Am I right? Correct. All right. Okay. So let's take that guilt. And how long ago, how many years ago was that MSN thing? 50. 50 years ago. Okay. So something that happened 50 years ago, you're still having tears about. Well, yes, 50 and then up a little boys, maybe 40, you know. So it didn't okay. happen in and on and off. But okay. All right. All right. So things that happened 40 or 50 years ago, you're still, correct me if I'm wrong, replaying it and having big time guilt about it. Correct. All right. Well, that sounds, that sounds fair. Fair. Yeah. Something you did 40 or 50 years ago, you should <laughs> still be, you should still be paying for it. <laughs> You're funny. You really are. I never knew you were so funny, but you really well, are. Well, these are reframes, too. <laughs> these are reframes, too. That's the purpose of them. I'm not I'm not here to entertain you. Um, yeah, I, I'm glad you find them funny because that's a form of a reframe having some effect. Yeah, yeah it does have an effect. All right. Oof. Well, are you not still replaying all that and paying for it? Right now, I have this this thing going on in my head, this whoosh, <laughs> and this energy stuff just... Whew. As in leaving, releasing? Mm -hmm. Oh, yes. well, we don't want any of that. No, no, take that back and let's feel bad. <laughs> No, no. You, I, I'm serious. You need to feel bad forever. You do. You do. <laughs> okay. <laughs> or you're, or you're, you're a bad client. You're a bad client. <laughs> and I think I will be a better mother. Releasing that, I well, we don't, we don't, we don't, we don't, no, we don't want you, we want you to keep replaying this so you can be a bad mother, okay? Because as long as you replay it, and correct me if I'm wrong, you're going to radiate all this stuff, you're going to be a bad mother, your kids are still going to pick this up, and there's mom doing her stuff again, yeah. and, yes. and and what she'll never change, you know. And that explains a lot of stuff, it does explain a lot of things. Well, okay. Hey, here's all this MSN that you're replaying, et cetera, et cetera. And it goes to whoosh and all that. So let's just be quiet a while. And you let me know when you're done so we can keep going. I'm sorry. That was that was supposed to be funny. <laughs> no, I thought, no. I, I thought you were still wanting me to release it, which it continues to do. Oh, all right. Well, okay. I was trying to make fun of it was what I was oh, trying to do. Okay. Sorry, missed that one. <laughs> well, okay. <laughs> I didn't get an A in humor school. <laughs> yes. How's your how's your energy and your depression? No, that that I I don't feel that anymore. Um the depression's a little bit there. Uh Energy's gone. Good, good. Yeah, the energy I, isn't gone. The energy is normal. Better than normal. Yes. Oh, okay. All right. All right. And that's yeah. Yeah. Well, shouldn't you have to have uh, revert back to you know this bad feeling with bad energy just because you're so guilty? I don't think so. I hope not. 
I'm, I'm poking at you, okay? I know, I know. No, I don't. <clears throat> All right, let me test it once. I'm, I'm, I'm feeling, I'm feeling good. Um, and it feels like it's continuing to, continuing to resolve. Like it's not done, but it's continuing. Okay. And that, that, by the way, is the kind of comment I hear with some frequency. Okay. Um, that we've sort of launched things or we sort of rolled the snowball down the hill. It's going to take more time to get down to the hill and have more snow on it and release Being from California, you have no idea what snow is. <laughs> well, we have mountains and we, some people do. I, I don't live near the That's mountains. True. Like that. That's true. And where I live, we get snow about once every 10 or 15 years, an inch, and it lasts, <laughs> it lasts about two hours, okay? so I'm looking outside and wondering when the five feet is going to fall. Um, can I tell you that I love you, and will you accept that? Yeah, of course. <laughs> All right, good. Do you mean it? Absolutely. Oh, you do? Well, I love you. Do you, meet, do you buy that yet? I'm starting to feel it. Well, here, let me let me just here open your eyes a minute, okay? I'm gonna I'm gonna give you some <laughs> give you some more of it. Huh? How's that? That feels good. Thank you. And if the word love is too loaded from our previous conversation, you can pick up the and buy into the word admire for what you just did. Thank you. All right. Well, let's do, okay. let's do this. Let's do this. Let's close out our session. Let's let a little more time go by. See how your depression, energy, restless leg, or whatever else is progressing. Or not, as the case may be. It's all, if it all comes back tomorrow, that isn't good or bad. I mean, you, you may prefer it's all gone, but it's, to me, it's feedback. It's feedback. Whether this lasts 10 minutes, 10 hours, 10 days, or 10 decades, it's feedback. Are you with me? Hey, I, I am. I just had a question that came to my mind. Uh -huh. um, thinking about the the, the carol tapes uh -huh. and, and wondering where I could start where I don't have to hear all the bad things that happened to her. Oh, they're sprinkled throughout. They are sprinkled throughout. You'll, you'll just have to um... close my ears and my, yeah. No, no if, if, if we're getting, I mean, we're, we're sneaking up into it. We're sneaking up into okay. it. You'll, you'll see it coming. Okay. Oh, okay. okay. But ch but chances are, if you're working with her as though you're working with me on your own, even though you weren't having satanical ritual abuse, okay, um, you can bring in, when I'm bringing an unseen therapist for her, you can have her bring in for you, okay, same time, okay. and see if you are um, able to let this flow nicely you know let it flow without you having to escape from it okay <laughs> no, if you I, I, I can't even watch when i there are movies and there are a lot of them lately that have like torture or, or bad things that happen i mean i can't even watch them i have to close okay. my eyes and my ears and then my husband tells me when it's over and then i can watch the movie again i just can't Okay, well, all I can tell you here is is I'm I'm sneaking up on this with her. Okay, okay. so it's, right. it's not it's not in your face right away it's at all. all. Okay. okay, okay, and so you'll see it coming probably. Okay, okay, okay. and that'll be up to you how you want to handle that. 
Okay. But okay. what I what I would do, it's up to you. It's up to you. Is uh oh, we're coming up to something. She's going to now start talking about ooh something, whatever it may be, and I don't think I'm ready for. It. You can stop the video right there. You're having an emotional response. All right. Bring an unseen therapist on that emotional response right there. See if she can't give you some peace on that. Allow you to be more re objective. Allow you to let it unfold without you getting all plugged into it. And if you get by the first one, well, you can probably get by the second one, the third and the fourth, you know. It's a very gradual buildup. Okay. But... I don't know what that's going to trigger for you, and we won't. But you, you always have the ability to click and stop. Okay. Stop it. Okay. Okay. All, All right. right. Yeah. I'll try. I'll try. I'll try that. All right. Okay. Um, I will send you a copy of this, and uh, wait a few days. See what happens. You'll go back over it. Go back over our session. You know, and so on. And let me know what happens. All right, dear. See you later. Bye. Bye.